Good morning, this is Tenganet and we are back with another video. Um, today is sort of a faceless video because we are speaking camera settings. And I'm just going to be taking you through my basic settings for when I shoot sports. Yazi, Buffett, Gunzi look like superstar. Yazi, it is very hard being a rock star. Gunzi. Usually when someone asks me for settings, my first uh, question would be do you understand the exposure triangle? Because I feel once you understand uh, the exposure triangle, that there's no need to be uh, memorizing settings for sports, settings for that. Uh, when you understand the exposure triangle, then you are more a bit more flexible as in terms of what you want to do and the results you want to get. So you are able to quickly uh, change your settings during games, depending on, on the kind of shot that you want to get. Uh, the exposure triangle basically has three elements, um, the first being ISO, the second uh, being your shutter speed and the last one being your aperture. Uh, the most important for me is my shutter speed and that will be the first setting we talk about uh, today. Um, when I am shooting sport, the lowest I could go uh, is one eight hundred of a second. Um, because uh, in spot there's a lot of movement happening, there's a lot of limbs flying around, your hands, your, your feet that are in motion and you want to capture this motion, uh, you don't want um, an arm being played out. So the higher you go, the faster uh, you capture this motion. So um, at the lowest I would be at an 800. Uh, usually for 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 non pro sports where I feel the game is a bit slower than uh, professional football for for kids under for for ladies football uh, the game is played at a, a bit slower pace so you get away with shooting at one eight hundred of a second but for the pro stuff I am at a comfortable place at one to fifty. 1000 that is where i feel uh, i am certain that nothing is going to be blurred out uh, that is the first setting in the triangle and the second setting is your aperture um, your aperture is you want to go as low as you can um, usually in in sports the, the lowest you can go depending on the camera you're using is a 2.8 if you're using a 70 to 200, it's a 2.8. A 400 mm, it's a 2.8. I use a a Sigma 150 to 600 that can only go as low as f5. So my my aperture will only be as low as five. I have here attached a 50 mm, which is a 1.8, just for illustration purposes. The one point the 50mm can go as down as uh, 1.8. So what, what, what this number does is basically it plays around with your depth of field. Uh, the lower the number goes, uh, the more blur your background is. The higher the number goes, uh, the more in focus your background is. Uh, so usually you want, you want your subject to stand out and have that separation from the background. So you you usually want to go as low as you uh, go as low as your lens allows, and for me it's usually at an f five because I'm using a Sigma one fifty to six hundred. So yeah, um, the last setting is the ISO. Uh, I say this is the last setting in the triangle for me because um, it is the last thing I look. at. Uh, I usually have my ISO at auto. Um, there are instances where I will not shoot auto. 
um, mostly is when I am shooting in a field where uh, it is half sunlight and half shadows. Uh, I usually would like to have better control because what happens usually is when you're panning from an area where uh, you are in sunlight and you are, let's say, back button focusing, um, you, your camera has already read that situation and, and has already determined an ISO for that particular scene. So when you pan around and you move into a situation that's a bit darker, uh, if the movement is a bit fast, if the action is a bit fast, then your, your camera does not adjust in time. So it will still have settings for uh, your ISO settings for when uh, it was a bit lighter, but now you're in a dark situation. Now you end up with uh, very dark images instead of uh, well lit images. So when I'm in a stadium like that, where I know um, where I know the lighting is when I know the lighting is half and half i am going to be shooting uh, on manual iso and moving it around moving it around uh, when i'm shooting so yeah uh, that is it for the exposure triangle once you understand the exposure triangle and how each uh, each part of the triangle affect your image then you are you are in a better position to adjust the other elements to ensure that you have a perfect image for instance, when you when your shutter speed goes up, then your image becomes darker. That means you need to use the other two sides of your triangle to compensate for that. When you when you aperture goes down, your image becomes brighter. That means there is some sort of compensation between um, the first uh, side and the second side, and uh, the last side would be just to try and balance it out because we usually want our ISO to be as low as possible um, because the higher ISO you go and the noisier your image becomes. Um, for me, usually I would I kept my auto ISO at 6400 because I feel that anything above that I get a lot of noise because of the kind of lens I'm using. I'm using a semi-pro lens, which is which is not very good in low light. So I try and limit how far my ISO goes. So in in the evenings, I'll get some some sort of a deep or a dark image image type because of that limit. I'd rather have um, a, a darker image than a noisier image. Yeah. So yeah, that is it for the exposure triangle. My next settings. Uh, that I usually play around with is my white balance. Um, there are instances where I'd leave it at auto, but I've, I feel I usually get like warm greenish tones and I've rather uh, opted to, to use a, a custom uh, point, which is I think at 5100. Five Kelvin and it it for me finds that balance between uh, warm and cold. Yeah, and that, that is it. The other last one would be your focus area. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'm going to be able to see this. Your focus area. Uh, my settings are. Uh, Taking chances here. You see, so my focus points are a zonal focus point, and it is usually centered so that uh, when I pan around, I know I'm always keeping my my subject at the center of my image um, i could change that uh, when i'm shooting slower uh, subjects then i know i play around with the composition 
I put it on the side. If I want my subject to be looking into or away from the image, uh, I can put it on either side. So yeah, this is, we usually I'm here at the center and I know when I'm shooting action, I just usually put my subjects in the center of my image and fill up the frame. So yeah, uh, those are my typical settings. Sure, I um, hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.